So I just got the T4 Collide gamepad by Gamesur, and it was not intuitive at all to get it properly set up. If you want to skip ahead, no problem. Time steps, time stamps are on the screen, and this video is broken into chapters as well. Anyway, once you get the controller working properly, it's pretty great. So don't return it just yet because you think the app is faulty or the gyro doesn't work. The following are what I believe to be the ideal steps to get the controller working. Uh, hopefully you're watching this before you plugged it into your computer, but since this is a tech support video, I doubt it. If you don't have a problem with your gamepad's calibration, meaning that there's no drifting occurring on a stick or with your gyro input, you should be able to safely skip to the next section where I'll discuss the common issue of the app getting into a loop of connecting and disconnecting the controller. After unpacking the controller and attaching the USB cable to the controller but not to the computer, place it on a completely flat surface, close enough to whichever USB port you plan on plugging it into. Don't pick up or nudge the gamepad at all during this process or you'll risk messing up the calibration, okay? With your computer on and logged into the desktop, we're going to hardware calibrate the gamepad. This is vital, so don't skip this step. Hold down back plus the GameStar button plus start with one hand, and while holding those buttons down, pick up the unplugged end of the USB cable and plug it into your computer. Once the gamepad lights up with white lights, let go of the buttons, then press the A button. Cool, now we're going to calibrate the gamepad. Remember, it needs to be on a completely flat surface, and you don't want to move it at all, not even a little bit. If you do, you may end up with a flawed calibration as I had, and you don't want that. First, press the left trigger all the way in three times, allowing the trigger to be fully released between presses. Then, do the same for the right trigger. After that, rotate the right analog stick 360 degrees three times. Do your best to ensure that the stick is touching the edge of its emplacement. Finally, do the same for the left analog stick. You shouldn't need to let the stick return to the center between rotations, but if your calibration ends up being wonky and you're sure you didn't nudge the gamepad, you're sure now, give it a shot. Now, press the A button. If you had a problem with your gyro drifting, this may well have fixed the issue, so hopefully it did. Failing that, try disconnecting the controller and doing the hardware calibration process all over again. That's cool though, you get to rewind, listen to me say this all over again. It's not too bad, right? If your calibration was successful, or you skipped ahead and you haven't already installed the GameStar T4K app, or if you've installed the Microsoft Store version, apparently the Microsoft Store version has issues according to some people on Reddit, head over to GameStar.hk, hover over the software menu, click GameStar T4K app, click download. Oh, and if you currently have the Microsoft Store version installed, be sure to uninstall that first. Now, run the file you just downloaded and the software should install automatically. If you get a notification from Windows about it blocking a potentially harmful app, hey, be a GigaChat and run it anyway. Normally, you would probably want to think twice about this, but you did buy a gamepad from GameSir and that is their website and software, so, you know? If you haven't come across this kind of pop-up before, just click More Info, then click Run Anyway. All right, once it's installed, run the GameStar T4K app. It may have booted up automatically, but if not, you can just hit your Windows key, type in GameStar T4K, and it should pop right up. Click the app to run it, and when it pops up, there should be text on the screen that says something to the effect of GameStar device not detected. Don't worry about it. The app will likely find your controller, so it's all going to be okay, you know? With the GameSir T4K window active and having your mouse's focus, single click it just to be sure, hold down the GameSir button and the button just under it for a few seconds. The lights on the controller should turn off for a moment. Once the lights turn back on, they should after a few seconds or less, but if they don't hold down that button combo again, you may be good to go. But just in case, close the app and launch it from the start menu again. Now if that doesn't work, try closing the app, unplugging your controller from the computer, rebooting your computer, plugging your controller back into the computer once back at the desktop, and starting the app once again. Otherwise, hey, it should be all good. Uh, be sure to click updates and update the controller's firmware. If your firmware was not up to date and you're still getting the disconnect reconnect issue with the app, you can try this process all over again after the firmware has been updated, though it may be risky as I don't know if this has a chance of breaking the gamepad while it cycles through its disconnect and reconnect loops. Now, uh, I did it uh, kind of by accident and it worked out all right for me. But if you're updating the firmware while it's looping through disconnects, you're doing so at your own risk. I'm not advising you to do so. I don't know if it can damage the gamepad. Okay, so when you alt-tab out of the program or close it, you will probably hear Windows make the hardware connected sound. And when you tab back to the GameStar T4K app, you'll probably hear the hardware disconnected sound. 
That's okay. This was confusing to me too at first. I thought there was something wrong, but the app appears to work by swapping out drivers. When the app is focused, a special T4 Collide driver, driver is active, and when you tab out or close the program, whichever driver is appropriate for the current mode of the gamepad is then activated, whether that be X Input or Nintendo Switch or PlayStation or generic. If you're having other issues with your controller, such as it not working in certain games, it may be because your controller is not running in X input mode. You can guarantee this by pressing the Windows key, typing in setup USB game controllers, clicking that and reading what controllers are attached to your computer. If the T4 Collide is the only gamepad connected to your computer, you should see something like this window. If your gamepad is not running in X input mode, you can hold down the Gamester and X button for a few seconds. The Gamester button will turn green and the gamepad will now be in X input mode. The other modes available are Nintendo Switch Pro, Gamester plus Y, which turns the logo red, generic uh, Gamester plus A, which turns the logo blue, and PlayStation DualShock 4, Gamester plus B, which turns the logo pink. I think generic and PlayStation colors should have been swapped since blue is often associated with this PlayStation, but hey, you know, I didn't design the thing. Okay, so I doubt that I'll be making much of this type of content in the future, but I'll likely be using this channel to showcase the mods I'm making for Daggerfall Unity, uh, Jedi Academy, and other games. Jedi Academy is actually the reason I got this gamepad, as I'm working on uh, full gamepad support for the game in the OpenJK engine, at least a single player version. And being able to switch between the various gamepad console modes will hopefully uh, be a viable way to test gamepad compatibility. Now, I doubt that the uh, OpenJK team will accept the submission as I'm only supporting single player, but I'll be making the code and builds publicly available if and once I finish it. And so hopefully uh, someone will find it useful. Anyway, I hope this video helped you. I know I could have used it when I got the gamepad. If it did, give it a like and quick comment so the YouTube algorithm puts some respect on my channel's name.